Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. I'm here with Tuesday 10 today, which is where I take 10 things from my big ever-growing basket of papers that I keep behind my desk. These may be magazine pages, um, printed out digitals that didn't get used, book pages, calendar pages, what have you. The last few pages of a book before I, before I recycle the rest of it, those kind of things. So what I have today is a printout of a digital of a William Morris um, sort of um, assembly of panels. I don't know who this is from. It's been around for a long time. I have this little scrap of really beautiful double-sided paper, um, scrap of paper. This is from a book on love and it has two sides and I feel like I probably want to use this side more than the other one although they're both pretty cool and we'll see. Then we have a Reader's Digest vintage, um, you know, the front page from a 1958 Reader's Digest. And it also has the contents page and this attached to it. So kind of some cool stuff. This is a jelly print of maple seeds. This is a printed digital, I think from a Shabby Dabby Doodah kit um, on some brown paper. This was a really beautiful fly page from a book. This is from a floral magazine. This is from one of those like children's encyclopedias. And then this is a random digital from I don't know where. Um, yeah, things hang around sometimes in my studio that they lose all, <laughs> they lose everything. They lose all their meaning. So um, <clears throat> I do think though that I would like to get started with maybe I was trying to see if there's anything that could go together. Potentially not, but we'll see. Hmm, okay. Maybe this and this would be good together. And we'll make a start with those two. So I've had another whirlwind week. I feel like right now I just am so busy that I almost have no concept as to whether I'm making enough videos or not because I'm kind of like, I have all these projects that are like in progress and I have plans for things but also it's just been really busy. This week though I was able to thankfully sort out my children's Halloween costumes so that's done um, which is always a big thing in October. Um, I typically end up making their costumes However, this year my daughter wanted a very specific costume. She wants to be a wolf and I did not feel like making a whole wolf costume. Um, so I was actually able to find a really, she wanted a very scary, what she really wants is a werewolf, but she doesn't really have the concept of what a werewolf is. Um, she wants like a scary wolf, but I found a really, she picked it out a really cool like um, werewolf costume. So she's ready to go. Oops that's my alarm sorry about that and um then my son we were out thrifting and we found a really cute ladybug costume for him so he's gonna be adorable and a little cute ladybug and my daughter's gonna be a, a scary werewolf I feel like I should write a little story maybe and I might do that like the werewolf and the ladybug I was thinking the other day about how you know, Halloween is a great opportunity to kind of write stories about whatever the kids decide to do or be. So I think if I do use this as a background, I'm going to lose the whole maple leaf thing and that might be kind of cheating. <laughs> um, yeah, I probably shouldn't use it that way. Let's see, is there anything else that I would be happy to use though? So. I think these panels, I want to use this one in the middle for something specifically like bigger, but the ones around it, not necessarily. So we can go ahead and tear those out and they can be a part of the background, I think. Uh, this one goes to here, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll get the scissors and give them a cut. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm definitely kind of feeling a little like I haven't made a full journal in like weeks and I need to get on it. Um, but I'm starting a, a few projects like the projects that I've been working on, they have a lot of prep work involved. So I'm trying to get all that prep work done. And I'm, I think I'm there for a couple of the themes that I want to work in, but I also think I'm doing a little bit of that starting too many projects at once kind of thing that I, that I sometimes get into. Mm -hmm. I gotta get this paper. Oy to back things here. Okay. I'm gonna set this paper over here in this book. I want to try to use up, I've got this silly book for my work that was made for us for a project that I'm never gonna do. And I wanna use all the paper because they, um, they spent like a fortune making this book, I think. and. I don't think anyone's using it. It was like something that they did for us to like manage like our projects or something, but like, yeah. Execution of the plan, not so good on behalf of whoever designed this whole thing. No communication. <laughs> so, so I don't think anyone's using it. And it's a, I mean, I would show it to you, but it's unfortunately got too much of my personal information on it. It's like a book that probably cost a fortune to make. The paper quality, all of the customization of images, like all of it, it's just, it's wild. And it's really sad to me that they didn't give anybody any kind of direction on how they should be using this or even kind of make a requirement that like you use it if you're going to be spending all that money. But that's just me and I don't run the world so it's not my money <laughs> all right so I think that could be kind of fun to have that in the background we definitely need ink on here to like settle all that white down let's just go ahead and we'll glue this down probably with our glitter glue just because it's a slightly thicker paper I used up like this book that I bought. It's a big book about love and I got it because it has all these really nice images in it. Um, but it's also got a few images that aren't YouTube friendly and also a lot of stuff that I just probably wouldn't use. So I tore all the pages out of the book that like, I know I'm not going to use for anything. And I made a whole ton of collage boards that I'm now, um, stitching on. And I think I probably will end up possibly doing boiled book with some of them um we'll see i need this extra glue gone there we go okay now i need to cut this out or tear it out I'll take a little off the bottom here but yeah look at this beautiful paper it's crazy how pretty it is this and then I just want to take this off the edge where it kind of doesn't really oops we have to use scissors okay there. I felt like that purple would be a nice thing to incorporate but I feel like maybe not now okay it's okay I'm gonna cut this little thing out that says notes that could be a handy little scraplet all right. And then I've got my, um, my bin of snippets here that like little things and also other things that still need to be cut out. It's all hanging around here. Would that be cute in here? I think it would. Um, then I think I want to put some kind of verse on top of it that makes it a little more relevant to the, like to a, the message, the imaging in the, in the 
piece itself. Hmm. There's a nice little green flower too. Yep. Okay, so there's a couple little bits. Yeah, let's go with those. I know that's a label from the Junk Journal Studio. I think the flower is from 49 and Market. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to cut this first bit of this poem out here. It says, What though the radiance which was once so bright be now forever taken from my sight though nothing can bring back the hour of splendor in the grass of glory in the flower um now that's a, that poem is a poem on definitely on like morning and it gets a little bit kind of closer to the emotions of death toward the end but this part of it i think speaks more to loss or you know the trying to acquire affection so I think I'm okay with that if it isn't too big which it may be unfortunately hmm I'm trying to think how I can use this I want to use this label but <clears throat> in this case I want to get rid of the words which isn't really something I normally do because usually you want the words. Let's see what the ink will do here. It will settle them down a little, but it doesn't remove them. So we need to find something else that we can put on top of there because I do want to use it. But I don't want that Cuban, Cubana label. Um, let me see, let me see. First of all, we need to just glue it down and commit to using it because we want to use it and not pass it off because we can't figure it out we got to figure it out <laughs> so now it's on there okay set those aside we'll still use them but first I need to figure this out now you know what I'll use that will blot out the words I just gotta be careful um luster wax is exkilding luster wax And that will make space for whatever we want to put on top. And we won't have words poking and popping through. So there we go. Hmm. Yep, I like that. Okay, now we're just going to ink this flower to get the odd little white bits around, aged a bit. My daughter has skating and swimming today. It's my busy day. So I've got to get her to all those things. I also have to grocery shop. <laughs> all the life stuff you gotta do when you got kids and people who depend on you for food. <laughs> I want to give a little height maybe to this bit of paper. So I think what I'll do is I'm just going to glue it on to this old book spine liner kind of paper here. And then I'm going to just cut around it. In kind of a shiggy jaggy way maybe. Just want to get the sharp edges off. Okay. Just to kind of get it to stand out a little bit. Yeah, that's good. And we will glue it on with our glitter glue. So I noticed something the other day when I bought our glitter glue. 
the bottle is a little more expensive, which I expect because everything is, and for whatever reason, we're just accepting that as a society that everything's allowed to be more expensive. Um, <laughs> I'm a little grumpy, not gonna lie. Um, <clears throat> and the bottle's gotten smaller. I can actually show them to you, but I don't want to be too, I don't want to cause too much drama here. Let's get some packaging paper. It has been painted a little bit from another project. I love using up this old paper. So now we'll just throw some glue on the back of here. Pop that down. And we're going to stitch around this so I'm not too concerned if the glue's not super, super stuck. my dog he is talking to a squirrel outside so he has started this annoying thing that's like mildly cute but mostly annoying <laughs> where he's like looking at the squirrels outside because they're super active in our backyard right now they're picking up like um the remainders of old um grapes off the vine and um apples and my tree like they're just like oh it's a festivus out here because you know i have all these things in my backyard that are kind of at the end of season now that i'm not collecting um <clears throat> and so he's like not barking per se but he's standing on the back of the couch looking at our big bay window making this weird bark talk like and it's just like okay it was cute for the first time but now i'm kind of over it <laughs> and now he's full on barking Okay, this I think I want to keep super simple. I printed it on this fun. Um, this is like a, a paper that has little bits of plant in it. it it's like a garden paper. Um, had this has this on the back. I got a whole bunch of those one day when thrifting. And I think what I would like to do is to just glue the two sides together here. And we'll fold it over. I rearranged my desk again so now I'm like constantly looking for everything where I put it Let's to get these wrinkles out of here That's perfect. I love when that happens and you find a really cool word snippet for just telling stories. It's pretty perfect. Okay, that I'm going to call done. Now. have a lot of focal points this time. It's mostly stuff that I think will need background images, except for all these bugs, bugs, bugs. What are we going to do with all these bugs? Hmm. Whoopsies. I am spilling everything here. I have all these bits and bobs that are just hanging around my desk. I need to use them up. <laughs> okay. I like this image the most on this piece of paper, so I think I'm going to use it. I have this little moth here. 
But I think I'm going to add to this. We obviously need to back this as well. It's this big piece of paper and the ink that's on this paper we got it um, we, it was one of the pieces that we made at the printing fair that I went to this weekend but like the ink does not want to dry I think they got the ink a little too thick on the plate when they were printing it because it was taking so long to dry and then yesterday I decided it just isn't going to dry and I don't want to deal with it anymore um, it didn't have a particularly important print to me on it anyways, but yeah, we got some really nice uh, prints from the printing fair. Okay, so that's fun. I like the brightness of it. I think I might just round the corners. Oops, what was that all about? There we go. Okay. Set that aside. I do have this scrap. Um, and all these bugs, let's think. Now some of them are gross. I'm not going to use the gross ones. I'm not a big fan of flies to begin with. Um, but I kept this for a reason. So let's cut out some of these flies. That's one thing I love about this time of year. No bugs. They're so gone now. It's great. It's a really bad year for um, some bugs, definitely mosquitoes. I felt like they were out in gangs. <laughs> Got so many mosquito bites this year. Oh. And I also found the yellow jackets to be a little annoying. I mean, they're always so annoying. They're like the most, um, like they're not aggressive in that they're going to sting you, but they're aggressive in that like they won't go away if you're outside. They just, they keep coming back. You swat at them, you ignore them. Whatever you do, they just don't leave you alone. I think sometimes it has something to do with like, the kind of um, shampoo and body wash that I use, I use Lush, which always has a really sweet smell to it, especially the one that I use, which is one that I stock up on every Christmas. It's called Snow Fairy, and it's this pink soap that has the most wonderful candy smell, and I'm sure that's exactly why the Yellow Jackets won't let me be. But yeah, they're, they're really weird. There's also a lot of lantern flies this year, which is sad to see because they're invasive and very damaging to trees. <clears throat> I've read a myriad of opinions about them and what their impact is going to be and whether or not you should kill them. And what the um, experts are saying is that they are one of the species that really could radically um, do a lot of destruction. And, and I've seen it between them and those horrible... Um, trying to remember the the non-slur name for the the gypsy moth um i don't like that word i don't like to use that word it's the what has become a relatively common name for them but they have a, a genus name and i can't recall it I'll, I'll try to look it up so if i do refer to them again i i can do so without using that slur um but yeah they they were also very damaging to the trees i notice that the most when i'm walking because i walk in a couple places um 
One is a graveyard that is also run, uh, or not run by, but the plants are managed by um, a botanical society, like a, an arbor society, because there's a lot of really uh, exquisite and different trees that are there that have been donated by different organizations or, or you know, wealthy families. And so they manage that aspect of the graveyard because the trees need someone who knows what they're doing. Um, it's too short. This will work. So yeah, the, the lantern fly, so look, this red and black bug, and it has, I think about three stages, like the pupa stage, like that, but it's actually like living and damaging. And, um, yeah, I saw quite a few of them this year. They quite like a lot of different trees, one of which is the linden tree, which I have one on my property. Unfortunately, I really don't like linden trees. I mean, they're good for making tea. You can make tea and you can, you can dye with the leaves too. They do print. Um, what else? They're nice. They're pretty to look at. The biggest problem with them for me though is that they create a sap that attracts all sorts of pesky bugs and they also grow what's called suckers just like on your tomato plants at the bottom of the tree um, they grow these useless branches that become almost like a giant bush around the tree and you have to continuously keep up on whacking them away because if you don't you end up with this gigantic bush around your tree and it gets really out of control and it also um, when you don't manage it, you're going to get more and more bugs. So it um, it attracts the lantern flies. It attracts ladybugs, which is fine. I'm always happy to have ladybugs around. Um, also stink bugs and assassin bugs, <laughs> which I don't like having around a whole lot. But also yellow jackets some other pollinators although i don't really see the bees particularly hanging around there because bees don't usually like a sticky um a, a sticky plant they like to be on something that has light pollen because if they end up getting sticky their wings get sticky then they you know have a hard time with it but for whatever reason some bugs just do not care about you know what may happen to them so i'm going to make this this buggy belly band with these um bits here. I think I might just actually glue them right down to the book page so it has a little bit of overlap and then we'll cut it out after. This would be good for an entomology type project anyways. All I can hear is this murmuring voice. I know my daughter's watching this science video that she's watching a lot of science videos lately on all different topics. There's so much content out there that like teaches kids about so many funny extremes in science, like, you know, the, the gross stuff to the most extreme size of things. Like what are all the biggest, you know, natural disasters or what are the biggest buildings in the world like all these different kind of videos that talk about like the biggest the the hardest the worst the best like you know it's funny but I actually think for whatever reason kids seem to really like that way of content being presented to them like it's just a thing I don't know my daughter really likes it like she she watches this one YouTube channel that's um, really good actually. He's a teacher and his name is Mr. DeMaio and he has all sorts of great videos on different, you know, science topics. And it had me thinking the other day, you know, if I was teaching school, I think I would totally have a YouTube channel and make content like that because like not only are you educating kids through YouTube, you're also creating lesson plan content and like you know if you're teaching the same range of great grades and that's in your curriculum set like that's pretty handy to have as like a 
a go-to you know you could keep going back to it and and showing it to your class and have this like ready-made lesson plan um i'm just checking if i have a label or something that would be kind of cool hmm contentment that'd be interesting <clears throat> I'm trying not to dig into my uh, pre my pre cut labels and things. This bin that I'm digging through, I'll pull it over here. So it has this stuff on top, but like there's a ton of things in here that are like little snippety cut out things, and like I'm just kind of trying to figure out how to use some of them up. There are some moths in here, which will help me with my moth journal. I'll set those aside. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of random stuff in here. <sighs> Cutouts of all different sizes. <laughs> I think it's kind of at the point where it's like more overwhelming than useful, so I want to try to like get in there and uh whittle it down a little bit. I kind of like this old Jumeau doll label because it says Depose on it and while that is different in French than in English I think I kind of like it. I was watching an episode yesterday of um, like YouTube has tons of Antiques Roadshow, which I love Antiques Roadshow. And I was watching someone had brought this old, like 1800s Jumeau doll. And I have all these doll books that I've been processing for my spooky doll journals that are coming out, my haunted doll house. And, um, yeah, the, the doll that, that this guy had was worth like $20,000. And I was like, holy moly. I see so many dolls in thrift stores too and like whenever I see that kind of thing like I think most of them they're not really worth much at all but you know if you can identify them um the thing is some of them though and this one definitely didn't even have a label so like you have to have a little bit more wisdom but yeah um if, if you know your dolls you might be able to find one that's really cool like that I kind of like that on that blue background do I feel kind of like, oh, I need to use this paper like and have it be visible because it's so pretty. But also sometimes that gets us caught up in like not being able to use our things. I'm just going to grab part of my arm here. I have the most cozy cotton dress on today because it is that time of year. I have these dolls that I painted a while ago. I could use them on here. But I don't know that they fit in with my mood today, oddly. I need to pull my dolls forward. I've got this like thing of dolls at the back and they could be cute. Okay, so I got a doll that I think would be fun on this background. And then I want to get one of these owls. I think this tall, tall one here that's sitting on these books. This is from the Stamperia Vintage Library Kit, I think, um, <clears throat> that I used in the Girl Who Wanted Books journal. So let's just cut out our owl friend here. Oh, I'm so sorry guys, we lost a little chunk of video there. I have to throw away this faulty battery, I have to recycle it. I think I figured out why my camera does this and it's maybe not even that it was my old camera. I think it's this one faulty battery that I have. Anyways, I'm back, <laughs> so sorry. So what I did here with this was um, I, I added the owl. I took some of this book spine here, put it in behind here, I cut out this little stack of books for her to stand on so she could be up here and I added this bit of gritty book spine then I took this contents from that old Reader's Digest book and put it up here so now we have this tag so yeah I'm going to stitch around that tag um, quite fun and I'm thinking I'm probably also I've not even done yet so you didn't miss a whole lot I wanted to poke a little hole through this key um, 
large enough, hopefully, but there, that I could thread this bit of gold seam binding into. Uh, oops, come back to me. And I was just talking about, I just got the most exciting email. So if you watched my Sunday share video, you will know that I got some beautiful paper, but also that I unfortunately lost um, three large pieces of paper that I bought while I was there because um, I couldn't find them because I was like, had my hands full of my kids stuff and my kids were, you know, oops, there's no staples in there. Um, they were needing my attention. I think that this stapler and this stapler are both empty. Like I'm so bad. I need to fix this. Um, <clears throat> I'll just stitch it on. It's okay. I'll stitch this way. Um, so anyways, yeah, so my kids needed my attention. I got really distracted and I somehow set down my beautiful papers <clears throat> and left them there. <laughs> so I thought, why don't I just send an email to them and see if anyone turned them in? And guess what? Some awesome, honest, amazing person did. Yesterday, like, I went back in to see if I could find them anywhere, and I couldn't. But, like, I thought, you know, why not just double check with them later and see? And surely enough, some awesome person was there. And, like, this is really just aligned with what I was saying yesterday to my daughter about how there's always good people in the world that will look out for you, look out for each other. I'm going to fold this in half and make a pocket with just that. It's really cute. Um, Cause you know, what I noticed yesterday is that there were just so many lovely staff and volunteers at the Ironworks Museum that um, this is the Howard Ironworks Museum in Oakville, Ontario. And I went to their, annual printing fair which is a lot of fun it's a print expo and um book binding all sorts of fun stuff going on so the volunteers and staff there are often many of them are set up in kind of like a workstation to show the public how the the lovely old machines work and so i just need a piece of paper one moment and so my daughter was having a great time yesterday being taught all about how these machines work. She, she got to um, spend some time with some really nice people. So I was telling her about how, like, you know, there's always good people in the world like that. So always, like, look for them, you know. And I think about Mr. Rogers always saying, like, look for the helpers especially in times of stress and strife you know like we're going in the world right now we have a lot of sad things happening in the world but there's also you know things to help us as a human race to try to keep going because we have to keep going We just keep going and we just keep hoping that it all gets better. Thinking probably of using another of these owls. I just quite love them. Okay. I'll just fussy cut this one sort of quickly. But yeah, the people there were so kind. And, you know, I, I'm i thinking I probably now remember where I might have left that. It was when I went to the cabbage table, the people who were selling the, or not selling, but they were talking about their guild, the, the Canadian Book Arts Guild. And I know I probably set some things down while I was there because I was looking at different things and I don't think I looked there yesterday when I wandered back in so that's probably where I left it so now I get to go on a little road trip which I'm excited about up to their studio to go pick it up and we'll see what kind of trouble I get in up there <laughs>
Okay, let's back this lovely 1958 Reader's Digest page. Hmm, too thin. There we go, here's a folder. if I have a any kind of a word snippet maybe that I could put on here. The fact that something is beyond your vision doesn't mean it isn't there. Let me have the magic forest, a little snippet there, that could be fun. Let's do that. Because it's nice old paper, so I think it will match. It's actually from like an old book. It's one of those pages where they talk about all their other books in the back of an old book. There we go. We will stitch that one. Okay. What have we left? This one, um, I think I'm going to try to find. Oh. oh, she would be great on here. Let's use her. This is from my Belvere collection on Etsy. If you're wondering, if you're like, oh, I like that green image and you'd like other green images like this, that's what that's from. So let's put her at the bottom of this. Okay, sorry for that little break. I had to do a couple of things. I'm back and this is now glued on here. So I'm going to just back it real quickly because it's kind of thinner and I want it to have a little bit more weight to it. Okay. Oops, get rid of that. I left my glue stick uncovered for a little while there. <laughs> so I'll get rid of that. I don't need too, too much glue anyhow because I am going to be stitching around this as always. Okay. I really like jelly printing a nice thin paper. It, it just has this nice feel to it when you glue it down to something a little thicker. Um, so I'm just going to come up and trim. So now we just need to decide the shape that we want this to be. I could round the corners, I could make it a tag. I think I might make it a tag. I kind of feel like I want to make a tag. Yeah. And then the other thing I think I want to do with this, because I really love the green and I want to give it a little more interest, is I just want to take some gilding wax and kind of just gently brush around with it like so on these little see the little creases from that thin paper and then we'll go just around the edge as well a little heavier on these little corners and bits and bobs 
And then I'll take a little bit of vintage photo and just kind of go around on the white, not like fully filling it in, but just shades of, you know, color. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, that will get stitched and I'll probably add something up here. Also, I'm wondering if it might be pretty to have like, hmm, like a flower that super pops somewhere. No, I don't think so. Not this time. That flower will find its use. Okay, so it's that one. Now let's look at what we have left here. So I have this, I have this, and I have this. So let's use this first, this little piece of scrap of paper. And I think what I'd like to do with it maybe, I'll just fold down this edge. Oops. <clears throat> and then again, and then up here, I think we'll fold this to go about to the halfway mark, like so. Okay. Let's just add a line of glue there to keep those together. And then we will glue this whole thing. Okay, so that will be strong and then that can come down. Let's think about the kind of closure I would want to put on this. Um, maybe a couple of, where's my little... I know I have these little circles somewhere. This one isn't that little, but that's okay. I need some thick paper. I've got this paper. That's actually really similar to that. That's funny. I wonder if I could do something with both of these together. Let's see if we could... What if that went like that? And that went like that. Hmm. We still they need to be together, these two pieces. What would we do to create something cool? I think we might need like a, a background or something to put both of these on. Or maybe we could connect them this way. And they could be like a folio. Maybe we'll use fabric. Hmm. Yeah, that's an idea. got this fabric that I call my Golden Girls Blanche Devereaux's bedroom fabric here. Let's see what we can do with it. So what if we cut a piece of it off? Oh yeah, this doesn't rip. It's too thick. Let's just cut it off here. There we go. Now, so we imagine this to be like an envelope and then this would also be like an envelope. Let's make them into envelopes. So this one. I'll fold that up. Okay. And then it needs a closure. Um, I'm thinking if I want to put a little magnet or if I want to do a little tie. How these itty bitty itty bitty magnets and if I lift that up again if I can if art glitter will allow me Mr. Art Glitter himself let's see yep okay let's just pop a little glue on there Okay, 
And then I'll re-glue that little gap that I opened. Just give it a little press. Good, good. And then I need another little magnet. Make sure you got the right side down. I do. Okay. And that needs to go in there. And it needs some kind of like a, a cover. So I think we'll take this piece of this card and we'll grab a couple of circles here. One, two. Then kind of ink around the edge. both of them. And then recover our ink. Grab this gilding wax again. I'll kind of gild them a little. of this one and the top of that one on the back sides so I know that my magnet is here so I need this right there I think okay right like that Then I can glue this whole section and on the back of here. I match those up and just train the paper. Press it down all around. This is kind of a little bit of a thicker paper, so I just have to kind of manipulate it a bit. Just train it into this, and you can use. A bone folder. Okay, and we can open and close that and like, let's just make sure none of the glue gets messy here. I'm not so bothered by gilding wax, that I actually kind of like. I'm going to a little more just gently across up the glue. Okay, so now we have a magnetic closure. That's fun. We'll just make sure that this opens all good. So we'll just bend the bone folder in there. Good, good. Now, this one, we got to make this one fun too. So let's do the same kind of thing, but a little bit different. One second, I have to grab one thing. Okay, so I just got my little slot punch thing here. Um, then I need to remember how this works. I think you, I think I need to trim this a bit. So I'll just trim this here. That would go like that. And that would come down like that. And we'd need a little slot right there. So let's try it. I'm pretty new to creating these kind of things. So I think I did it incorrectly. I think I did it upside down, right? So if I wanted it to slot in, I need it to be. I need something coming from the top. Um, how would that work? How would that work? Or would it go? No, not like that. Hmm. <laughs> okay, let's think. So if you have something that's folded. Okay, if you go here. That. And then the thing that tucks into it has to go that direction. 
Okay. Think, think, think. This is the flap. Then I need something to hook it onto like that. What would that something be? How would that work? Okay, sorry guys, I had to take a little break to help my daughter, but I thought I would also help my brain figure out how to use this little <laughs> little thing. And I know what I've done wrong. Okay, so I need this to be coming down, not up, right? So we need this to go like this. Um, but I obviously want it to be on the green side. So I'm gonna just fold this again. I, I actually was gonna plan to fold it anyways because I want that to be a little stronger. Like I wanna have a nice strong lip for this. Um, so now I'll go ahead and glue it again. Oops. Glue, glue, glue. Add a little in here as well. Okay, so flatten that down. Okay. Then I need this thing again. And hopefully it can fit on there. Or actually, can I bring it up? Can I bring that and have that be the, the strong edge lip? No, let's not do that. Um, I don't know if this is going to be too thick. We'll see. We'll see. No, no, it'll be okay. Okay, let's just make sure we're in a good spot. We're down far enough. Yeah. Okay. We are testing the limits of this punch. <laughs> it's there, it's there. Just gonna push it a little. There it is. Give it a little push. Then we gotta fold this into the notch exactly where it should go, right there. Okay, so now we have that. And that's like a little notched envelope. Um, but if I need it to be Hmm, you know what? I don't know that that's going to work the way that I'm hoping. Because I want to be able to stitch these together. Where is this one? So this one will be able to open independently because it'll be stitched there, but not here. So that will still be able to open. This one, I could stitch it. I could stitch this piece and it could still slip in like that and be like something to write on instead of an envelope, more like a little notebooky type thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we need to cover this and make it look less ugly, right? It looks kind of ugly on its own. So, let me get, what colors are these? Okay. All right, so I have a bit of coffee dyed paper here and what I'm gonna do is just glue this all down. Okay. Good, good. And then the first piece can go right here. Just line that up. And then trim this off the back. need a couple more pieces of this. Okay. Let's make sure that's all down. On this side, I'll glue to here just to give it like a little patchworky kind of look to it. Kind of neat. Then we'll just clean this up by trim trim around the edges. Get rid of all the excess coffee dye paper. And I'm going to be stitching around all of this anyway, so even if the glue is not so strong, um, I'll be able to work with that. 
Okay, so now we need to fold this up to where it needs to go, which is right there. All right, so now we have this and we have this. And what I'm gonna do is take this little bit of fabric here. And I'm thinking of how this would look in a signature, right? So I'm gonna stitch this to here and I'm gonna stitch this to here. Um, and I'm going to leave a good amount of space because somewhere in this center is where we would fold that in to make it like a signature add-in, um, like inside your folio. So let me go do my stitching. I'll show you again where I'm going to stitch just in case it's confusing and you're like, what is she talking about? Um, so the other thing is we have two sides to this fabric. I probably should think about that. Okay, so let's go to the very bottom right there. I need stitching from here to here and from there to there. Now if I were to fold this fabric in half would that be yeah you know what that would be fine. So why am I folding it in half? Why am I creating this double layer? Because I don't want it to look ugly on the other side right when it's in the signature. So I'm going to layer this here and that there and then oh I can't do it that way hold on we got to do it this way yep we got to go this way and that would tuck that way so that would be like that and that would be like that okay so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to stitch that on and I will come right back and you'll understand what I'm talking about here a little better alrighty so I got this all stitched together so they're stitched here and um, here, you know, I stitched them on. I also stitched the ends of these two pieces of fabric together so that they're one, you know, solid piece. And then just to kind of bring a continuity of stitching, I went all the way around this and then all the way around this. It also, you know, adheres that coffee dyed paper better. So yeah, I think this is cute. I just have to do maybe a few little trims of threads. I think I got most of them, but this is what I would intend to use this for. So you kind of fold it right down the middle, right? Like so, and that would go on here and be in your folio. And then here, you know, so then you would get to it, open it up and you've got writing space lose it back up and you know you could also further embellish with something here like you know this or something um I actually like that hmm let's do that but we're gonna add it with some Fabri-Tac glue because it's a velvet paper and it definitely needs more adherence than what this sticker has but before I do it let me just ink because the white edges will drive me bananas Okay, so let's get the Fabri-Tac and peel the sticker off the backing. Come along now. Oh goodness. These stickers are never hard to peel. I feel like, you know, it's just when I need to get something done <laughs> quickly that things decide to go awry. Okay. But I shouldn't stress this is supposed to be my long form casual video of the week so no stress allowed okay there yeah so that really makes it look a lot nicer with that there done then when you flip over to the other side you know you've got this and you would stitch this right into your your signature and then you've got this little magnetic closure and we can pop something in there. Um, I don't have anything right now, but we'll find out when we, when we have time to. And that's that piece. Okay, so let's set that aside. That one's actually done. And we have a couple more things to conquer before we're finished. So we have this and we have this. Um, now this, I'm thinking, I love the little bird up at the top. And I'm wondering if maybe it wouldn't be cute to just add a sweet little girl on here like her and something to collage behind her. Um, hmm. Maybe these. This is a vintage Valentine. Hmm. 
Not quite. See that little bird up there and it's quite sweet. never find the right scraps when I need them. I think that's too bright. That could be cute, but it still needs a pop of something. And maybe we turn her into a fairy as well. Let's do that, okay. Oops, wrong glue. That goes here. This goes in here. Okay, our glitter glue. Actually, I'm gonna ink this first, hold on. Under the bird right there and then I'll just put a little glue on the butterfly wings here so that I join those two together okay then we need Put her on here like she's kind of on a little angle under the bird. Now I'm going to cut this down a little here. It's kind of big. says grow that could be cute grow uh, but I think I want something a little more mm. enchanting fairy maybe twined around mystic by the beauty of gesture so astonished by this adventure let's do that that's kind of like a little you know words on what's happening then I will use a bitty bit of this beautiful old oh look at the back side of that old book spine Yum, yum. But I want to use the grungy side, actually. So astonished by this adventure. We might be able to actually put that down here and sort of center it. could probably pull that off. Maybe we'll peel this a little. So 
save that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll back this whole thing. <clears throat> up this last bit of this folder. Then I'll ink there. I'm going to definitely um, turn this into a tag and I'm going to stitch around this. Probably add a little lace or something up top. Could even add maybe this, this bit of raggedy book spine. That's actually quite cute. And it goes with everything else that I've done. So yeah, let's add that. Set that up here for stitching. And we only have one thing left. Um, this. Okay. Let's start by what to do here. Start by just gluing it, maybe. have like a nice card shape. Then I'm just gonna grab a little fabric here and stick. a bit of scrappy fabric like so and I will stitch on that as well so I'll come back and stitch everything and show you everything we made today 
All right, so we actually made 11 things today. So here's the little flip flop insert for a folio um, or signature rather. It's like a little folio. So the magnetic pocket is great. It works. Um, and I just sort of stitched around everything to make it sort of have continuity. And the the other side is like a little tip out for writing on. This is the little card that we made from that William Morris uh, paper. This I made a little pocket out of. It's from a vintage Reader's Digest book. And then that little grungy tag with the fairy on it that we made. And then this is from my Belvere collection on Etsy. And I just used that fun jelly printing. And our collage tag. And that little fly belly band. Vintage photograph, big journal card with a moth. The land beneath the waves and this poetic lovely love book piece and then the little owl magic forest so thank you so much for hanging out with me today i'm so happy that we made all these fun things and i will definitely talk to you next time if you are new here or you have not yet subscribed please do um, i tried to do fun things here and i would definitely love to have you with me so i will talk to you next time bye for now